Hi, I'm Jason Leahy, Executive Director of the Illinois Principals Association. Thank you for joining me for this IPA talk. And with me here remotely, I've got Dan Kaiser, who is the principal at Dwight High School. Uh, Dan was just announced here recently uh, in, in the last few weeks as our Illinois High School Principal of the Year. And if you see Dan having a, a particularly big smile on his face, uh, <laughs> he, he's retiring here at the end of this yes, year, sir. too. I know that's a mixed emotion kind of thing, but but holy smokes, Dan, let's just start there. Could, could you ever imagine of a way to finish up a, a K-12 career than, than a pandemic? I mean, holy cow. How's it going for you? It, it's going fine now. Uh, I will say the last last four or five days, especially the last 48 hours, has been very stressful uh, for myself and my teachers, getting through the first wave of assignments and and hoping that you have a nice percentage of kids that are participating. And yesterday we had a, a Zoom meeting with all my teachers and myself and found out that about 45% of our kids were in compliance and another 55 were not. Mm. So I was in yeah. scramble mode at that point and uh, made, uh, made an announcement to our families uh, last night. I had run it by our teachers before, beforehand, run it by my superintendent, basically telling families and kids that this was not an optional thing to do. Yeah. These are tasks that we expect them to do and incompletes will be coming. And, and I think the most important thing was to let them know that there will be consequences for incompletes. Could be in the summertime. We've talked about credit recovery programs in the fall because we mm -hmm. just simply can't move them forward if they don't get their work done. So miraculously, this morning, I was getting uh, teachers emailing me and saying, I'm getting this work in and this work in. And wow. I, I had to make calls to 80 different families this morning wow. and, and talk to kids personally and email some of them. And uh, at late, latest count, we're at 68% compliance right now. So well, that's a quick turnaround. <laughs> it, it is. It is. And it's, it's a testament to uh, our teachers for reaching out to the kids. And it's a testament to, uh, I guess, longevity of myself of uh, mm -hmm. having good, good relationships with, with parents and students and, and knowing that they will, they will follow through for me. And I, I'm very, very appreciative of my seniors. My seniors yeah. have been leaders of this school all year. It's a difficult time for them, obviously, but they have picked up the ball and they are, they're making sure they're getting their work done. And I'm sure they're, they're talking to their siblings too and, and taking care of business there. So well, it's, it's, it's been good. Last 12 hours has been awesome. Well, that's a testament to you and your leadership and the kinds of relationships that you've built with those students over, over time, Dan, and, and really just kind of a nice way to, to tee up the reality of, of what we're dealing with here in uh, with remote learning. And, and I definitely want to get into to more of that, but sure. But uh, just digressing just a little bit, um, you know, obviously you wouldn't have had that type of turnaround in, in students stepping up and doing what they were need, needing to do without you having time there in, in your school, providing outstanding leadership to those students um, and, and really, uh, you know, pulling those key tricks out of, out of your bag. Uh, could you just share with us briefly a, a little bit about your, your background and, and career, any family kinds of things like that? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I grew up in a really small town. Pawpaw, Illinois has a population of, of just a little over 800. And I, I'm thankful for that because I've been involved in small schools my entire career now. And when I was in a small school as a student, I was involved in a lot of things because I had opportunities to do that. And it taught me how to be a leader in various environments of school life. So I, I moved from uh, there to uh, DeKalb, Illinois, and, and did four years at Northern Illinois University, got my bachelor's degree there, got my teacher certificate through there, and landed my first job as a biology and chemistry teacher at Hayworth High School, yeah. uh, just south of Bloomington Normal. I had uh, five student teachers during my nine-year career there, wow. and with those five student teachers, I was motivated at that point in believing that I could be a good administrator and, and lead, lead teachers. So I, I went to ISU and got my degree there in 95 and then landed my first job here in Dwight in 96. And I've been here for 24 years as wow. an administrator. I was at the junior high grade school level. I was a tech coordinator in the interim for nine years there. And then my, my last nine years has been here at the high school. So yeah, I've been a part of this community for a long time. Both my kids went to school and through this entire system very good school district, small school district, and I continue to preach to these kids, take advantage of every opportunity that comes your way in a small school setting and always believe that you can be something big 
no matter what kind of school environment you come from. So uh, I, I think that that message has resonated for many years when people think of me. And I, I think that's why I've had the following I've had here the last last couple of days. Yeah. Well, and it's, and it's obviously gone very well for you, you know, being named Illinois High School Principal of the Year this year and, you know, just a, a great way to, uh, to cap off uh, your time there. But, you know, we are in, in a unique situation, Dan, and, and I would say <laughs> having the experience, the relationships, everything like that, it's, it's uh, been, I'm sure, very helpful for you as you, you described right off the top there. So, you know, just talk to us a little bit about, um, you know, for Dwight High School, what, what is remote learning looking like for you right now? Remote learning is, first of all, teachers being as innovative and creative as they possibly can. Uh, we have a, a shared Google folder, which I'm sure a lot of principals have set up for their teachers. We have shared everything we possibly can with one another through there. Our young teachers are, are kind of the energetic ones that are teaching some of our more experienced teachers some of these new tricks of, with uh, Classroom and Zoom and, and different uh, platforms that can be used. But I will tell you, I have a physics chemistry teacher here that has gone full bore with this whole thing. He, he's uh, purchased a Wacom tablet and has uh, become, uh, he, he bought into a free IPEVO program, which pretty much sets up a Khan Academy atmosphere for him. And wow. he's created videos and he's shared not only his videos that he's made with our teachers, but he's also created an instructional video for them. So that's a major part of what it looks like here. Uh, teachers sharing with teachers. Uh, we have Zoom meetings uh, once every two or three days together. I tried to divide it into departments so that uh, we're, we're, we're not having to overlap and teachers listening to certain things they really don't need to be listening to in, in terms of that. But those meetings are going extremely well also. We miss each other so much. Uh, seeing each other's faces, it's just such a different dynamic not to be able to walk through a, a hallway every day and see students and, and teachers. And teachers have shared the students are wanting, they want to be back here too. They don't, you know, of course, e-learning is different. So that's, there's going to be resistance because of that. But it's just because they, they want to get back to their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. But um, other things that we see in, in uh, remote learning here at Dwight, uh, it's, it's a lot of communication, a lot of extra phone calls, a lot of invites to Zoom meetings. I'm meeting with my seniors, all of them, on, on Monday, and they're all excited about it. They've, they've already emailed me and said they're ready to be there and can't wait to talk. You know, they're, they're wondering about what's going to happen with prom, what's going to happen with graduation, what's going to happen with senior awards. So I'm going to try to settle them down a little bit and, and let them know that that's still in the work. So yeah, there's anxieties with it. You know, that's going to come along with it. Anything new. We, we tried this last year with that cold spell that came through in January, February, and it didn't work so well. We weren't prepared. We're more prepared now. Mm -hmm. And the only difficulty right now as compared to last year is it's nice outside. <laughs> so those, those kids are, you know, I, I think they're looking out the window thinking, why am I in front of this computer right. having to do remote learning? But um, we follow a lot of the guidelines that has been uh, handed down from the ISBE. We're trying to keep it at 20 minutes per teacher per student. So our students are looking at about two, two and a half hours of work each day. And we, we throw it out there to the students that way. You know, manage your time and you'll have free time just like you do every day outside of school and you'll be fine. And so it's just a lot of sending that message in various forms out to the kids and to the teachers too, quite honestly. So, you know, you talked at the, at the very top there, Dan, about having to make a lot of phone calls or outreach to students, obviously, to get them encouraged to be turning in work, yeah. those kinds yeah. of things. Um, one of the things that I've talked with uh, all the principals of the year a little bit about in this time, and it, and, it, and it really does key off of some of the recommendations and guidance that we have received from ISB uh, with regards to attendance, not necessarily from a compliance perspective, but just making sure that we're checking in with students and making sure that they're okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, you've been picking up the phone. I'm sure your staff have been, been engaged with them. Yeah. So I guess I got a kind of a multi-part question here. What, what types of strategies are you using just to check in with kids, make sure that they're doing all right, make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. And then I'm, I'm just curious personally what the uh, nature of those phone calls were like when you were actually <laughs> talking with those kids. I'm just, yeah. just curious about that. 
Well, you know, you, you mentioned it. You start off with, I, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about your well-being. I want to make sure that you're doing okay. Is there anything we can do for you? Do you need a Chromebook? We sent some, a bunch of Chromebooks out last week. Do you need help with that? Are you having internet issues? Could I provide for you hard copies where you can come pick up uh, in a tub outside the school? Uh, so I start with some, you know, questions like that just to see if if it's just, you know, they need something or if they're just being stubborn and not wanting to do it. Now, obviously, there's there's some of that, yep. but I, I go back and I continue to tell them, you know, this this is something that we we want to we want to move your learning forward. It's important to us. And they all know that they know that that's our priority is to do what's best for kids learning here at this school. So you start with that, and that kind of breaks down the barrier a little bit that some of the kids might have or the parents might have. And actually, after about five of my calls today, I, I had to get some hard copies. I had to get a book or two out of a student's locker. Mm -hmm. I had to contact a teacher to email a student that was just having trouble getting things loaded up on Google Classroom. So there's some technical difficulties there, but I softened it. You, know, you got to soften things with, with all these families because some of them just don't have the means to get access to some of this stuff and sometimes that's that's where the answer is so i started there and then kind of move forward to uh did you hear my message last night about what you know I, i'm trying to keep you from having to go to summer school or take uh take away electives from you in the fall and, and go to a credit recovery course so you know you always want to give kids options and make sure they choose the options that that you know will be successful or beneficial to them and, and to you as a administrator. So yeah. that, that was my approach. Yeah, no, I, I think that's, that's terrific. So with regards to uh, delivery of, an, of instruction, Dan, I'm, I'm kind of curious about the types of conversations because uh, I, I think even more so when we think about things at the high school of, of earning credit and, and you know, all, of, all of those things associated with it, um, you know, advancements through progressions of courses, you know, when you think about moving from various levels of English or mathematics and making sure that kids have the things that they need from, from one, one grade to the next. What kinds of conversations are you having with your teachers right now with regard, regards to content delivery and making selections of content? How to, how to keep in play, you know, I, I think the good recommendation from the state board of not wanting to do harm for kids, but, but also just trying to be mindful of, you know, making sure that their needs are met, are met, not just for today, but but also what might be in front of them. So what what's that conversation looking like with you and your team? A lot of it has been what the ISB had told us earlier is try to give something to them at the beginning of the week that they can work on over a four to five day period. And that has been that has been our goal with every every department we can we can uh, utilize that with. And looking more at projects or assignments that are application or synthesis driven where kids are creating things. Kids are like reading a Shakespeare skit. I know that's something that's going on in English right now. They read a Shakespeare skit. They read a little bit, more, a couple articles about uh, Shakespeare's language and life and how he put those together. And then they're creating their own in a five day period. Uh, same things happening in chemistry and physics where uh, they're, you know, that, that's difficult doing lab type work, but they're watching labs uh, through a couple different programs that our physics teacher has found. And uh, there's one out of Colorado, I think it's called PHEDT or something like that, but it simulates labs and then the students analyze and, and then recreate those types of things. So it's not so much, you know, the pencil paper, uh, we the only part of the only pencil paper stuff that we're doing right now is out of packets that were sent home the day that we left that we knew this might be coming work teachers were sending some packets home mathematics type things uh utilization of khan academy though that that helps a lot as well and then students doing reports or giving uh, some type of analysis of what they saw and learned from a khan academy video so it's it's nice. It's actually some higher level cognitive skills that are being developed and, and asked uh, of students. And, and we continue to talk about those things in our Zoom meetings. And I think it's getting done. So that, that's been our approach is, you know, try to try to raise it a little bit, but give them choice. Let the kids choose yeah. kind of amongst three different types of levels of assignments, because we also want to provide our students 
that want it the opportunity to raise their grade from where it was before. So yeah. we're providing some enrichment things and asking them to go a little bit more beyond the regular assignment to, to bring those up. And that's working too. Yeah. So we've talked about relationships, Dan, a bit. I know you're a high relationships yes. uh, leader. So in this, you know, and, and relationships typically work best, you know, when we have proximity to each other, correct? Uh, yeah. You know, maybe at least a little closer than six feet, but now we're, we're even farther apart than that as we're all working from our homes. Yeah. Um, you know, but with that being said, you know, as a leader, you still got to maintain contact, still, still have to build relationships. We talked a little bit about what you're doing with students. What, what are you doing to, to support your staff to, to maintain relationships with them and, and continue to, to be an encouragement to them? Good question. Um, you know, the Zoom is, is as face to face as we can get right now. Yeah. But I, you know, of course, I have every one of their cell numbers and we text each other. We've called each other a few times today. Uh, I had to find a stats book uh, about an hour ago and I had to call my teacher, my stats teacher and ask him where exactly that was because a, a student wanted to pick one up. But um, we're working on some fun things. We, we have, we still are planning what we call Trojan Pride, which is a celebration of academics and attendance and behavior. And we are planning to still do that. We have lots of prizes we give out. Our, dairy, our local Dairy Queen gives uh, free shakes to every student that qualifies. And we, we, in our meeting yesterday, we turned it into, uh, let, let's make Trojan Pride this time about compliance. Everyone that complies by April 30th with all of their work and no incompletes, you're going to qualify for this. And we're going to do, if we have to do a virtual giveaway, we will, and maybe curbside pickup, whatever it is. But now the teachers and I are working on developing a commercial for this. And so we're going to provide video clips of each one of us and make this commercial about what we want uh, kids to strive for and, and the reward behind it. Because we kind of gave the consequential statement yesterday to all the kids and families. Now we want to turn around and say, hey, but this is this is the positive side of it. And so they'll see our faces and we're going to work on that commercial. My band director's already said he's going to create the jingle. And so uh, just doing fun things that, you know, we we have done together in the past. Uh, we're, I think we're going to miss a jazz show that we always do a skit, a faculty skit at the jazz show. And I think we're going to lose that this year. Yeah. So we're trying to maintain as much closeness as we can to one another through exactly what we're doing right now, through any kind of platform where you can see each other's faces. And it's really, it's really cool at the end of Zoom meetings to see how everyone says goodbye to each other and how they're so happy to have seen each other and, and wave and, it's, it's, it's a not, you know, it's, it's the best we can do right now. Uh, I wish I could do more with the students. Like I said, I'm doing it with the seniors and I can't wait for that next Monday to see their faces, but that's, that's the best we can do right now. And, and hope that at some point before the school year ends, we're back together. Yeah. So let's talk about that meeting with the seniors next week, Dan, yeah. you, you referenced prom graduation, those, those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, you know, I've talked with other high school principals. I am a former high school principal myself. And so I've tried to just have the mental exercise of, you know, what would I be thinking through right now mm -hmm. if, if I were back in, in your seat? Um, you know, what what's processing in your mind, you know, as you think about those big milestone events, those memory creating yes. events, yes. you know, and, and things we can still try to be doing for kids. I mean, what's going through your mind right now with that? Well, uh, yeah, I, I've, I sent a strong message out to my teachers yesterday. I said, if you get that, if that question is asked, do not use the word cancel because yeah. that will not happen. We will not cancel. We will postpone if necessary. There are some schools in our surrounding area that are already talking about graduation ceremonies in June. My uh, prom, my junior sponsor emailed me yesterday and was going to call the the facility that we we're going to host our prom at and ask if we could move that if there's some dates available in June. So it's, it's a lot of moving back and kind of waiting for government officials to tell us when something like that would be appropriate. Yeah. The best thing I've got in my pocket right now for seniors and their families is they all know this is my graduation. This is my final hurrah. Yeah. Yeah. And so they know that I'm going to hang on to it as long as I possibly can. I'm going to make it as meaningful as I can for them because it's going to, it's going to be meaningful for me too. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. And, you know, we've talked about a parade, um, 
you know, we, we've always paraded the kids through the kindergarten through eighth grade building when they're graduates that day, day before they graduate. And wow. they kind of shake hands with and slap hands with all the kids and see their former teachers. That'll be out the window this year. So we thought about maybe, you know, a parade that has kids at a distance from one another and they're moving through the town and through the main street, and maybe pick up their diploma there. Um, we'll work it out though. We're, we're hopeful and confident. We're keeping everything normal. We are, we're, you know, our, we have American Legion awards. The teachers are already making selections for those. We have a lot of scholarships. We've sent out all that information via email to the kids and given them links to where they can work on their scholarships. They're doing a lot of that by the way, cause they have not a lot else to do at home. And Even my sophomore at home, we're encouraging to get busy with some of that. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. Like, yeah, you got a little time. Yeah, yeah, you got a lot of time. Get away from the TV and, and do yeah. some of these things. So I've never had so many uh, letters of recommendation requests from kids as I had this <laughs> last week. So, uh, well, yeah. Parents are like, get this done. <laughs> yeah. Right, uh -huh. right. So it's, you know, we normalcy is what we're trying to do. And, we're, and we actually, uh, my Jocelyn's representative is coming here Tuesday uh, to curbside deliver caps and gowns and yeah. announcements. So we're, we're, you know, we want, we want our seniors to, to feel that we are still plugging along. We are not dismissing either of those major events for them. We have a big event called senior awards too. That mm -hmm. is the week before in baccalaureate. So we, we have plans for all of that. It just might be postponed, as I said. Yeah. Well, it's interesting you, you bring up Justin's cause I was, talking with some of our statewide reps here that we connect with as an association. And uh, I was just asking uh, Todd Lawrence, who covers the central Illinois part of the state, mm -hmm. I said, how's, how's it going for you? And he said, he goes, you know, you may not believe it, but parents and kids want their stuff. They yes. want those caps and the gown. They want all of those things. Um, one, they just want it for their memories for themselves. Even if, even if something were not to happen like a graduation, they can at least get dressed up, take the pictures yeah. or whatever. But I, I really believe most schools are going to try to figure this out, in my opinion, like you guys are working towards, which I yeah. think is absolutely the right thing to do. I, I agree. My, my Justin's rep, Brian Walter, up here, he's, he told me that parents, there's something going on with Facebook where parents are taking pictures of their kids in their graduation gown and trying to, I'm sure, trying to create normalcy around the house, too, yeah. and, and keep that excitement. So that, you know, uh, someone had said, let's wait till end of April to find out what's going on with this whole pandemic. And I said, no, I said, let's do it like we always do. This is the week that he normally comes. Let's keep it that way. We'll just have to do it curbside with, with masks and gloves on, which would be kind of a scene, but <laughs> that's, right. that's what we're going to do. Yeah, that's absolutely. Well, let me, let me ask you this, Dan, uh, as we, as we kind of come towards a close here, but I think this is really important um, and I've asked all of the principals of the year this question because I, I think this is important to get a little insight on. You know, as a leader, as you know, you, you can't give anything that you don't have personally. Leaders, high quality leaders lead themselves well first uh, before leading others. And so, mm -hmm. you know, with that, with that in mind, what are you doing to, to take care of yourself during this time? Uh, good question. Um, well, I... I I work out all, I work out four days a week and I, I don't, I don't skip that. Even though my gym's closed, I'm making sure that I'm doing that. Uh, that's, yeah. that's part of my normal. Uh, I, I, in between times, I, we, my wife and I take a walk. We have a, a path and pattern that we walk through town, keeping distance, of course, but that, that is something that I've done. Just having those talks, uh, we, we haven't, we haven't had conversations like some of the ones we've had in, in the you know past five, six days. So that's been really nice. Um, we, we FaceTime our kids. Uh, I've got a daughter in Bloomington. She's a teacher also. So she's, you know, she's, uh, asking me questions about what I think about remote learning. She's a second grade teacher down there in Pontiac. So, uh, she's third year in, but she's got some experience, but she still has questions. So FaceTiming her and, and helping her out along the way. And then, um, my son's down in Nashville, Tennessee. And so we FaceTime him uh, usually once or twice, once a week, usually, and, and find out how he's doing there. But uh, play with the dog. Our dog's had more attention than, than she's ever had in her life <laughs> these past two weeks. And uh, probably ready for you to go back to work, right? Like, yeah, right. Yeah. And I, you know, that, and that's another part of it. I, you know, I like coming back to this office. Uh, this know. kind of gives me my calm and, uh, and, and allows me to have those interactions with, with people and, and students, even though it's at a distance. 
uh, I, I, you got to stay with your routine somehow. And I know I'm just fortunate enough that I'm able to come to my office and, and do some of the things I, I normally do. You know, I, I set up baccalaureate a couple of weeks or a couple of days ago. I just, I want to keep that normalcy for myself so I don't go crazy. And, uh, and stay away from Netflix and watch those <laughs> shows that are on that that uh, well, program right now. Tiger King, baby, right? Yeah, that I, one of the, uh, yeah I've watched like, that a couple times. <laughs> I'm like, I'm usually in the know, but I'm, what is up with this and this guy with this mullet? Like, are we back in the 80s here? Or what's yeah, right. It's, it's become like a cult, hasn't it? I don't know yeah. what else, how, how else to explain it, but uh, I, I jumped into that, too. I had My barber actually told me I needed to go see this, so <laughs> I did, and uh, yeah, it's... It's quite, it's quite the show, but um, you know, and you know, that's another thing, ha, you know, have fun. I mean, you're, you're, you're cooped inside, at least you do things that are fun for you and, and fun for your, you know, have a, have a spouse. I got a great spot. My wife, Kathy, she, she has been so supportive over all 24 years of my administration and, and uh, she gets it, you know, and that, that's, that's uh, being with her and, and talking these things over and she, you know, she, Poor thing. She's been my soundboard. You know, I come home with frustrations of 45% of my students are complying yeah. and she has to listen to that and, and calm me down. So she's been great. Uh, and, and that's what, you know, a lot of us need that too. That's very important to have an understanding and, and supportive uh, partner. And yeah. I have that. No doubt. Well, I married up too, Dan, just so you know, so I, I can absolutely relate to that. And yeah. I also want to say, a true testament to how much of a pro you really are that you suited up for this, uh, <laughs> this zoom conversation yeah. during a pandemic, man. I'm, I did. I'm really impressed yes, with, <laughs> with the, with the tie on there and everything. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I, I, I said, I haven't, I haven't put a tie on for over 10 days and I, I felt a little <laughs> strange walking here to, uh, walking in the office with this on with nobody else around me. Right. So. right. Well, in my bad, I, I should have said, Hey, we're, we're a little more relaxed right now during this time. Yeah. Well, yeah, a lot more forgiveness there for sure. But uh, no problem. Well, Dan, thanks for joining me, giving me a little bit of your insight and just with regards to leadership, how how you're take care of yourself as a school leader, uh, and take care of your kids and and staff, all of that. Uh, sure, appreciate it. Uh, congratulations again for being named Illinois High thank School Thank you. Of the year this yeah. year. As well, let me let me then let me thank you and, and IPA and everyone that is a, a member of that staff. Uh, this. Not only has that experience of being principal of the year been awesome, but just just the networks that are created through the IPA and my my involvement as as a uh, awards chairman and membership chair and now region director. My goodness, how how great it has been to make connections with all these administrators around my area and my Corn Belt division because you guys you guys preach this all the time. We are on an island. It seems like sometimes like. Like you're the only one dealing with these problems. And when I'm able to read IPA Connect when I wake up in the morning and see other people are dealing with the same things that I am and they have these different types of solutions that I might be able to try, it makes it all much better and less stressful to be a part of this great organization. So thank you, Jason, for everything you and your staff does for us. Well, I'm grateful for those those kind words. And I got the best team here. You know, they're, they're just such a terrific group of people to work with. And uh, they continue to get the job done. Uh, this, yeah. this outfit, if you, if you weren't here in this, I'm, I'm currently uh, social distancing alone in the office. I'm, I'm here all by okay. myself. In fact, yeah. my wife told me that she, I said, is it okay that I go into work? She said, it's probably better that you do uh, with, <laughs> with our five kids at home. And yeah, all that, yeah she I'm sure. got a better handle wow. on it. But, but with that being said, though, everybody else is working remotely, you wouldn't know it uh, because they continue to produce. And yeah, appreciate you're from them every day. I know. And I appreciate you recognizing that and sharing that. So again, Dan Kaiser, principal at Dwight High School and Illinois principal, high school principal of the year this year uh, with me. My name is Jason Leahy, executive director of the Illinois Principals Association. Thanks for joining us. And just for point of reference, today's date is April 9th as we work through the COVID-19 pandemic uh, with some remote learning going on in our Illinois schools. If there is anything that IPA can do for you, don't hesitate to reach out at any time. You can call us, we are picking up the phone or you can pick us up or check us out on the web rather at www.ilprinciples.org. Take care.